tradition as the national anthem has been sung and the championship game of the 24th annual GLI is about to get underway. And it was Wisconsin beating Michigan State in the final. I'm sure the Wolverines would just soon uh, break that trend right now. The key to winning it seems to be getting past Michigan State at some point during <laughs> the tournament. General, yeah, yeah, you got to so do Western that. Western Michigan did then beat the University of Michigan. Of course, Wisconsin won it last season. North Dakota disposed of the Spartans last night and now will face the University of Michigan. Warren Sharples in goal for the Wolverines. He is 6-6-1 with a 4.23 goals against average. A junior from Calgary, Alberta. And on the other end, trying to even his record at 6-6 six and six, is Chris Dixon, a sophomore from Vancouver, British Columbia. The Sioux in possession along the right. Taranika skates it out, now moves it ahead to center. Kovarinsky off to Romanek. Romanek trying to get in tight, and he got the shot away, pops into the air and drops behind Sharples. And North Dakota takes the early lead. Romanek got around the defense and in, and it got alive in front of Sharples. Also there was Lee Davidson, the center on that number one line, a junior out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. I'm not sure if he got a stick on it or not. Take a look at the play as it goes in on the right side. Romanek, the freshman out of Winnipeg, turns around the defense, beats Evans right there, and it slides out in front. Yeah, I'll give it to Davidson, I think, Larry, and that would be his eighth of the year. Take another look at it. Good move to the inside, a fake. It's alive. First rebound is there. It slides out a little bit high. About eight. He's gotten the jump on both clubs in their games here. Look out. Dixon Ward to Eisenhut. His shot knocked down by Sharples by Davidson all the way back to the corner. Copeland picks it up behind his own net. Now it comes out on the right side with a pass to Denny Felsner. Felsner whistles past Romanek. Comes in on the right side. Two on one. A shot. He scores! There's one of the fellows you talked about, Larry. Denny Felsner takes it end to end right up the side. There was a bump at the blue line, a little bit of a pick. It was. Gave him some uh, ice to work with on the right side. The defenseman trying to move across on Felsner, and he puts it in. It's the red line at the blue line. There you see the bump right there. That takes the defense away, and Felsner's in alone. The good wrist shot, perfect scoring position. 4:24 is the time, and he has his first goal of the tournament. Dennis Felsner in his 12th, 13th of the year. Take a look at it from behind the cage. That's a nice shot. Beat him high on the stick side. It ties the game at a goal eight. We have 15 and a half minutes left in the title game. Stone fakes it. Now releases, covered up by Dixon. Of a face off to the right of Chris Dixon. Denny Felsner, the freshman from Mount Clemens, Michigan, tying the game for the Wolverines with a power play goal. Jason Herter being checked by Felsner, gets it ahead, brought up the ice quickly by Kobarinski, poke checked away. Drop back now for Parent with a shot knocked down, loose puck goes to the corner, Felsner clears it to the corner. Out it comes to the right point, Herter. Herter winds up, drills it, deflected wide to the left of Warren Sharple. Brose goes to the corner and clears it out for Michigan into the Wolverines players bench. And with 25 seconds left in the power play, another faceoff coming up to the right of Warren Sharples. The game is tied at 1-1. Sharples to Kwong. Uh, Kwong has it stolen away by Romanak and a shot kicked out of there. Goes to the far corner. Davidson loses it there. Nice move by Brown. And he gets it out of the zone. A pass to Parnowski. Working one on the one. Parnowski muscles his way in. Shoots. Knocked away by Dixon. Backhanded pass by Brown. Play that could very easily. Right there is one of them. The other one was a few moments earlier as Dixon Ward stripped him of the puck. The Wolverines have dodged both of those bullets in the sense that nothing has gone in the net. But very, very dangerous. Kwong having a tough chance. And this is kind of the story of Pardoski's weekend. Getting just a half step short of getting in clean. On the right wing corner. Buck lies free. Picked up by Miles O'Connor. Can't clear it. Stone. Here's Davidson out in front. A shot. Kwong knocks it down. And then Sharples covers it up. 6.27 left in the period. It's tied at one. You're watching the GLI. Seconds left in the power play. Rink wide pass right on Kwong's stick. He goes to the right wing, but it's taken away by Kobarinski. Kobarinski into the corner. Out it comes to the left point on the drive from the middle of the ice. Sails wide, and the rebound is knocked in. Quick play off the backboards as Neil Eisenhut gets his second of the tournament. 
and a four point night against Michigan State and now he tallies on the power play for North Dakota to make it two to one good hard drive from up high active boards behind there we saw Michigan able to get a couple of, or one goal for sure last night in that situation with the carom off the backboard here you see we're talking about Herder's shot wing and it's gone through a lot of folks but it's out in front Sharples can't react quickly enough Eisenhut puts it in look at that that's a nice shot in fact it was stopped and still had enough steam Larry after that tip to come that hard off the boards at 15:34, Eisenhut puts North Dakota on the board look at that two sticks touch it and still it comes up North Dakota struck first just like they had against Michigan State in the early going last night 126 of the first period and it was Lee Davidson getting his eighth of the year working a rebound in the slot Romanek starts it in on the right hand side you'll see him give a fake to the middle bring it back onto his backhand and then shove it catch it out in front of Sharples first save is made it gets loose Peronica kept it alive and Lee Davidson's cruising down the slot was the man who picked it up here you see the lead pass into the neutral zone Romanek makes the move around Doug Evans first shot Sharples is right there long rebound second one doesn't go in now number 22 is Peronica. He kind of puts it back out front. Lee Davidson puts it in. And from behind the play, watch for number 14 cruising the slot. He's the fellow that's going to wind up with it. The flash in off the right side of your screen. There it is, just waiting for the wrist shot. In it goes, and it's a one to nothing North Dakota lead at that point. Dennis Felsner at 424 came back for Michigan. Essentially all individual play for Felsner, although O'Connor and Brose touch the puck in the defensive end to start the play so they get assists on it there you see Kramer picks off a man at the blue line Felsner's in alone swings it to the middle good scoring position high risk shot over the uh, stick side and his 13th of the year is in the book and that made Michigan four for six on the power play in this tournament see Felsner swing across the blue line with the help there all of a sudden he's wide open moving in Lee Davidson can't catch the play and it concedes the slot really and Michigan had a couple other 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 players in the zone they didn't need them and from behind the goaltender Chris Dixon watch it'll come right up into your eyes there it is just inside the pipe and number 13 is on the board for Dennis Felsner who'd been shut out the first night against Michigan Tech then toward the uh, end of the period 1534 Eisenhut on the power play for North Dakota Herter and Kovarinsky it comes out of the deep left hand corner up to the top it will go and uh, up there Jason Herter a man with a real big shot lets it fly two sticks touch it on the way and still it has enough power to come off the boards that hard right onto the stick of Neil Eisenhut and he tucks it in for his 13th of the year and the lead as it now stands look at this youngster just lean into it great form he knows what he's doing from up there the blue line and uh, Jason Herter, a talented fellow. Neil Eisenhut finishes it off from behind. Watch the sticks. One, two, by the leg of Sharples. Bing, it comes back. Sharples about eight feet out, cutting the angle, and it left it wide open for Neil Eisenhut. And two to one is where it stood at that point. Shots 13, Michigan, eight for North Dakota. Power plays one for two, North Dakota, one for one for the University of Michigan. And we have one period in the book. Out it comes on the left side. Brought up by Duberman. Duberman, drop pass taken by. Herter out in front. He shoots. Knocked down by Sharples. He's still down. Puck is clear to the near side. The way, I guess. <laughs> Herrett. A little bit behind Buck. He was tied up. Buck with a shot. And Sharples oh. makes the save. I don't know whether that puck would have cleared the crossbar or not. But Sharples, with a quick reaction with a glove hand, grabbed it. Yeah, it looked like it might have been wide, if not high, Larry. In fact, it was down low. He picked it off down on the ice and then carried it up with his glove. But between the two defensemen, Lee Davidson picks off the puck. Davidson with a long pass. Here's a breakaway for Ross Johnson. He's moving down the slot. He shoots it wide. And the Wolverines dodge the bullet as we approach the halfway point. Two to the lineup. Inserted tonight, as a matter of fact. Has no points in a North Dakota uniform. Missed a good chance there. Took it to his forehand and shot it by the post. Really didn't have Sharples beaten by any means. Sharples was right there. Cut the angle off. Take a look at it from down low. Not really. A little bit of a deke with the shoulder and then swung it by. He had some net very pass knocked high off the stick of Kovarinsky. Goes to the corner, comes out there. Herter winds up. His drive is grabbed by Sharples and he holds on. A couple of extra pokes with a stick there. I think Romanuk in there for North Dakota is the fellow. Trying to pry it free right around the whistle time. <laughs> that herder can rifle it, can he? Oh, yeah. Whoop. 
Darbles was lucky that actually he, there was no screen involved. A lot of players around, but there was an alley right to him. He did get a, a look at it. Well, there's why the extra circles back. Now the Sioux putting it together as he hits the blue line. Moves it off to the left side, intended for Parrott. He's tied up by Miles O'Connor. Swept into the corner by Roman. A separate pass is shot and a goal by Lee Davidson. Tough break for Michigan. Good uh, goal of opportunity for North Dakota. The puck got free up near the left point, and it was just kind of there for somebody to pick up. And North Dakota was able to finally maintain the possession. Here you see it, boy. Michigan needs to clear it. Now they've got two guys, three guys, up to chase the puck there, and that leaves Davidson wide open. Once it gets into the corner, school was out because Michigan had overloaded far too much, reacting to the loose puck laying there on the ice. Miles O'Connor's up there. He's the one that really ought to be. The rest of them should have stayed home probably a little bit more. Once it gets down inside, Davidson now has nine goals for the season, and North Dakota has taken a three-to-one lead with 5:55 left in the second period. Oh, a loose puck and a big scramble. A goal comes loose. Dixon wasn't quite sure where it was, and then when it was going to arrive, it's a big goal mouth scramble, but he survives, and it stays at three-to-one. There you see the drive going in. Dixon tangled up with everybody there, gets it alive. Michigan can't quite locate the puck, get all the lumber on it. Here comes shoots it toward the line, taken in on the left side by Dixon Ward. Ward shoots it out in front, right on the stick of Parent. Shot, loose, score. Neil Eisenhut, his second of the night, third of the tournament. And suddenly the Sioux explode. Larry we said on a replay a moment ago, three or four minutes ago, that the late minutes of the first period had really belonged to the fighting Sioux with their speed, getting that half step. Michigan maybe wearing down a little bit, at least enough to further define the difference in team speed. And the late minutes of this period have gone the way of North Dakota once again. See the goal is Eisenhut is just posted up on the far side. Picks it up, tucks it in high, right here. And really all day to make sure he had it lined up. And it's four to one. So what had been a very closely contested game has opened up now. North Dakota in front, four to one with 5.05 left in the second period. Here's another goal by Davidson. And now it's five to one. Lee Davidson with his 10th of the year. And the second fighting Sue to pick up a hat trick in this tournament. Last night it was Dixon Ward. This time it's that man, Lee Davidson. He now has 10 goals on the year. Take a look at it. Nice drop pass top of the circle. Just moves it out of the legs. Tender for North Dakota. Delsner shot. Oh, oh, Dixon just made the save. He had a piece of it three different times. And finally got there to cover it up. <laughs> I didn't really try to put the hex on the poor guy. Nice face off play. Felsner gets the draw back, makes the move to his left. It's it's a setup play. Michigan uses that a lot. And if they win the draw, it generally turns into a shot right off because the guy from the, uh, the right side, the right wing in that position, Felsner, coming across behind, move all star caliber. Tim Helber and Scott Goborinski are the face off picked up by. Bobic, his shot knocked away, squirts away. He has to drive into a mass of humanity, and the play is whistled down. <laughs> About everybody except the Sioux's goaltender involved in that big, massive pile of humanity in front of Warren Sharple. I don't know that that had any chance of getting through. Take a look at it from the far end. Now, look at all these folks in here come Respirant. Okay, I, he's got to take the shot, but you know the, the threat of injury in that particular situation with everybody down and backs turned and everything. After the first 20 minutes, Larry, it was a two to one game, and then through the almost 14 minutes of the second, it was still two to one. But then Davidson, working on the power play, got it from Paranika and Romanek, 
and had his second of the night in the net. Take a look at it, how it transpired. Michigan kind of flowed too much to the puck. It left everything open, and Davidson was alone, alone in the slot, and uh, Peronica was able to find him there. Here's the other angle. Miles O'Connor up challenging the puck, playing his position properly in this instance, but the other two fellas probably should have stayed home a little bit more and covered men on a man-to-man -man basis. Nonetheless, it was in the net. 3-1 at that point. Then at 1447, Eisenhut from Perrant and Jackson gets his 14th of the year and his uh, third of the tournament. Take a look at it. It comes out of the corner. Great pass out in front. It goes up high, down into the zone. Crossing pass right here, and Eisenhut is on the opposite side. He tucks it in high. You see the tail end of the play, and it was a 4-1. to one. Here's the other angle. It comes down inside. This is Perrant. He'll slide across through the legs. It gets through the first man, Davidson, cruising right there. Eisenhut comes up with it. He's got all day. In fact, he hit the water bottle with it, and uh, it was 4-1 to one at that point. And then Lee Davidson finished the hat trick at 14:58. They got all three of those goals in a minute one. Johnson on the assist for this one, and Davidson gets his first hat trick of the year, his 10th goal of the year right here. It's a drop pass. It pulls it in. Nice wrist shot. Takes it to the near side, just inside the post, and it's 5-1. to one. Happy fella. Second hat trick of the tournament for North Dakota. It was Dixon Ward last night against Michigan State with a hat trick. There you see the total shots and the shots in the second period. North Dakota just took over. Left of Warren Sharple. Puck pops straight into the air. A bouncing puck. Belzner takes a whack at it. Kept in by Parent on the left. Now it comes out to center ice. Brost has it. Two on one. Brost on the right. He's got Felser on the left. Trying to feed him, but it was broken up by Bartley, who got back in a hurry. Now along the near boards. Felsner kicks it along the boards. Now it's tied up. And we'll have a face off to the right of Chris Dixon. 16.47 left in the game. 5-1 North Dakota. Here they come across. Bartley turns to the man. He's really playing the puck at that point. I almost get the feeling Bros might have pushed it up to center. Roberts drives it right back in. Picked up by Davidson. Out it comes. Intercepted by Urban. Urban takes it to the right side. Trying to get past Bartley. Takes it to the right corner. A centering pass out in front. And Bros was beaten by Dixon. But the rebound is hammered home by Kip Brothers. And it's 5-2. to two. Well, it was a combination line as the play finished because Brost had come on the ice. It was the Helber line, that fourth line, Larry, and they've been Michigan's best line all night. Interception at center ice. Urban turns it in. Helber had gone to the bench, and Brost was coming up to join the play. Here he comes right there. The backhand, the save is made. Coming in on the off wing, Kent Brothers, and he tucks it in for Michigan's second goal. Good effort here by Urban, really, who made the play. Got it into the zone. It's alive. Reaching through the defense, kind of extending his body, his brothers, and that's a nice play for him. He had one last night as well. Second goal of the series for him, or the tournament. Copeland's shot is deflected into the air. Felser with a centering pass, and the shot is just wide and high. It goes to the right point. Here come the Sioux, two on one. On right wing, it's Bobic. Bobic with a centering oh. pass, went underneath the stick of Koborinski, who is roaring in from the left side by Dixon. Picked up there by Parent. Parent skates it up the middle of the ice, comes to the right side. Parent dumps it toward the line, picked up on the fly by Romanek, a shot. Sharples with a save, fallen on, that squirts away. Paranika in the corner, a centering pass. Wide. And linesmen make the call sometimes, but in that case, there was no question about it. Moose with a rink wide pass for Brown, lines up, Burroughs scores! My goodness! Michigan's two for two in the power play. Michigan is five for seven in the tournament, and Michigan's back in the game. A blistering shot has pulled the Wolverines to within two goals, and still half the final period remains. That's just a good shot up high. They take him, you know. <laughs> yes, I know. What I, I was know saying exactly last what night. Going to say. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> takes him up just under the crossbar. Michigan State, one of the things I suggested during the broadcast. Romanek has it poked away. Brown picks it up for Michigan. Three on two. Brown crosses. Drop pass for Pardowski. He can't get the shot away. The puck is loose in the slot. Pardowski with a backhander knocked away by Dixon. Now taken by Copeland. Copeland shot knocked down, and Dixon dives head first to cover it up. It stays at 5-3 with 5-23 remaining in the game. Major League traffic jam down in front really denied Michigan. They had 
The puck was free, but just no place to shoot. There were just too many people down into the crease. And they got away with it. Here it comes in on the right-hand side at the blue line. Good pass right here by Brown. Gets Pardoski loose. He slides down, and then it starts to jam up. A little bit loose here. Now, where's he going to go with it? There is no... <laughs> Everybody's in the way. And finally, would be a nice while to ago. see them get one more goal, make it 5-4 going into the final minutes and make it a little <laughs> more exciting for those in attendance. Those that have chosen to remain here. Base off to the right of Dixon. Picked up by Marvin. The flank it out front, a shot by Aaron. Oh, oh, oh. Glaring defensive error. The first really bad, bad decision by a defenseman in the zone for North Dakota tonight. Gross gets up one more goal. Let's see, for Todd, that'll be his 12th of the year. And funny things happen. Hard pass against the skate. And the rebound, and in it goes. Do not blame Chris Dixon for that. Take another look at it. Just you know, jam it into the skates and across in front it goes. Got to be sure of those passes. Especially the way the other team, in this case Michigan, has been forechecking. See that right there? He, did, he just made a mistake with the direction, tried to rescue it too late. Brost is in on it. In it goes. <laughs> well, you got your wish. That's good. 5-4 is the score. Sets up a good finish. Sure does. With four minutes, six seconds left in the game, anything can happen now. Like I said all along, Michigan's going to catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the building thought that, <laughs> yeah, including those 12,000 that have left the building. Yeah, right. <laughs> Urban gets an assist. He's the guy that had the first shot, created the rebound. Bros gets the goal. Look out. There it is. He scores. Ties the game. Todd Bros. His second of the shift. Belsner on the assist, and we're going to tie. An incredible comeback for the University of Michigan as Todd Bros ties the game with his second goal in the space of a few seconds. And the Wolverines, trailing 5-1, to one, have come all the way back to tie it at 5-5. 12 seconds it took. <laughs> Look at that. Bros down inside, and he pops it up over Dixon's shoulder. Another look at it. Here comes Felsner. He brings it in on the side. Brost cuts to the net. Gets set up up front. Felsner's really off balance, but he did get it alive down in front. Suddenly, we've got us a tie game. How about that? Ahead on the left side now. Brought up the ice by Bobbick. He brings it to the middle. The right side. Drop pass. Here's Bobbick on the right. Moving in. He shoots. Kicked away by Sharple. A minute 37 left in the game. Brought up the ice on the left side. Brought in by Urban. Urban goes down. Gets a centering pass away. And Dixon falls on it. Uh, you know, for my money, after all the brouhaha, the scoring of the hat trick by uh, North Dakota's, who, who was it? Lee Davidson. The efforts of that guy in the whole tournament. The player of this game for me right now is Jeff Urban. Out it comes on the left wing with 10 seconds left in the game. We may be going to overtime now. Trapples lifted into the air. Romanek tied up along the far side. And we'll go to overtime before the championship of the 24th Great Lakes tournament is determined. A sensational comeback by the Michigan Wolverines. <laughs> After being down five to one, they have come back to tie it and force the overtime period. So North Dakota, which seemed to have things comfortably in hand, heads for the dressing room to think things through. While the University of Michigan will take a whole lot of momentum to the dressing room with them to get themselves prepared for a 10 minute sudden death overtime period against the WCHA's Fighting Sioux of North Dakota. Period. Into the third we go. The University of Michigan working hard at 615, uh, 638. They're able to get their second goal. Kent Brothers is the recipient of the assist from Brost and Urban to pull the Wolverines at least a notch closer. Here we see Urban moving in on the right-hand side. 
He uh, just flips it back. Brost off the backhand. No, but Brothers trailing the play. Tucks it in. And Michigan has a little uh, surge of adrenaline, at least. You see Urban here. and We talked a lot about him in the last few minutes. He intercepts on the back check in the neutral zone. Carries it in one-handed. Drops it back. Brost charging. Picks it up. Can't get the shot to go in. But as you see, the stick come up in the air. Number 14, Kent Brothers did it. And uh, from behind the goaltender, Chris Dixon one more time. One-handed pass. Usually it doesn't work that well, but this time it did get it out in front as uh, Urban got it out there, and it was a goal for Michigan. 9.05 on the power play. This is after a bench minor for the too many men on the ice. Michigan looking for a break. Another surge of adrenaline, and they get it on the power play. Brown. He takes it in on the right-hand side and just blisters. A high slap shot from about 35, 40 feet. And in it goes over the shoulder of Chris Dixon. You see it again. Leans on it. Got the weight forward. Good follow-through. Everything was proper, and it's 5-3. to three. Take a look at it from behind. Chris Dixon beat him on the glove side. He showed us a good glove, Larry, on a couple of occasions, but that one got through. 15-54, Todd Brose from Urban. This is going to be a scramble out in front. See them working inside. It is Urban once again. Who comes up with it? First shot? No. Rebound there. Now, we've got a bench minor that turned into a power play goal for Rob Brown. Then we've got a defensive error there for the first time, and that turns into a uh, Michigan goal right here. They're trying to pass it out of the zone. Off his own man is the North Dakota player, and that puts it alive in front. Urban the shot. Rebound Brost, and it is. He's got 11 on the year, and it's 5-4. to four. Take a look at it one more time. There's the first one. There's the second one, and it goes as uh, charging the net was Todd Brost, who had a heck of a series. Uh, third period as well. He gets the other one at 16.06 from Dennis Felsner. Felsner leading the charge in. He'll get it alive down in front. Kind of off balance play off the wrong foot and everything else. But Bros tips it up high just under the crossbar. That's where we are at five all. Now in the period University of Michigan was able to come up with a lot more shots. Here you see that play developing one more time. Felsner and Bros hit the line. Now watch Bros. He said okay you handle it out there Mr. Felsner. I'm going to the front. Left two defensemen with Felsner. He was in alone. And bingo, the tip in. Take a look at it. Dixon trying to react. Pops up over as he played the low one, and then it just popped up over his shoulder. So it was 5-5 at that point. That's where we concluded regulation. 31-26, 15-5. Michigan outshot North Dakota in that period. And just, well, you know, North Dakota took over the game completely in the second period. And from the 13-minute mark down, Michigan took over the game in the third period. Ward. Now Brost picks it up. Brost with a drive. It's wide. The long rebound comes out. Belzer moves along the boards to Copeland. A skidding puck. Brost out front. Shoots. Oh, what a great play by Dixon. Well, they're even in almost assist to the referee because that time the puck hit Greg Shepard. It was intended to go into the corner. Michigan hit Shepard. It was out in front. Brost is denied. Good catch by Dixon right here. Might have been high anyway. Take a look at it. You be the judge. No, that was going in. He knocked it down with his arm. It goes into the corner. It's still alive. And take a look at it again. You see it coming out of the left side of the screen. They were trying to get it to the corner was Todd Copeland. There's Bros. Boy, he almost had it. Whew, that was close. Knocked away by Brown, working hard. Parrott gets it back. A shot knocked down by Roberts, who doesn't have a stick. Oh. This time, Sharples <laughs> knocks it away. Roberts hollering for a stick to you. Chances. Roberts, just a while ago, having to operate without a stick, made a save, just standing his ground there. The Baron, he shoots it ahead. Copeland picks it up at center ice. Five seconds left in this period. Across to Felsner. Felsner roaring in on left wing. Felsner with a backhander at the buzzer. So it stays 5-5, and we'll switch ends and continue play. <laughs> yeah, blue light was on before he uh, released the shot, so there wasn't much question what was going to happen. It wouldn't count. It is 5-5 in one minute. We'll resume overtime sudden death action in the GLI, and you'll see it here on Passports. For the second half of uh, second half of overtime. And right at the end, Felsner was coming in, and you see he tried to pull it to the backhand. It was tipped away. The blue light was already on. Maybe from this angle you'll see when the blue light came on over the top of the goal before he released yeah. it. And knocked to the corner by Bros. Bros kicking it along, being checked by Parrott. Centering pass, a shot wide by Felsner. Felsner over on the far side. Uh, 
offside. It just was out of the reach of Alex Roberts. So it'll come back to center ice for the faceoff. Well, you know who brought it out in front? Our old friend Jeff Urban. Take a look at it. Number 15, Urban going in for checking it. Gets it out to Felsner. He's got to work his backhand. Couldn't quite finish it off. I'll tell you, Urban has had maybe a career game, Larry. He hit. Oh, the puck is pulled out of the left side. A shot by Moose. A rebound goes to the corner. Moose picks it up there for the Wolverines. Eludes the check. Brings it out in front. Felsner couldn't get a shot. A backhander by O'Connor. Loose a backhander by Felsner. O'Connor jams it. Covered up and it's trucked out of the zone by the Sioux. Icing is called against North Dakota. And Dixon shaking up a little bit in that tray right in front of him. Take a look at it. The backhand. It's alive down in front. Felsner tries. He almost snuck one in and stole it. O'Connor tries the wrap around and he just took it off the post. It, I think it ricocheted out into the crease instead. Take another look at it right here. It hit Felsner right in the chest. He tries to backhand it. This is where I thought that it was over, Larry. Pastor Romanek, a little bit too far, got his shot away, but very wide to the right of the goaltender. Out it comes the center ice, two on two. Moose on the left, Valentine on the right. Moose with a great move! He's in! He scores! victory for the Michigan Wolverines who come from a four goal deficit in the final stages of the third period then win it in overtime six to five on Mike Moose goal and the Wolverines are the 1988 Great Lakes Invitational Champions. What a tremendous comeback for this Michigan team. Now exchanging congratulations with the North Dakota Fighting Sioux who had it all but packed away. Red Barrettson just can't bear not to smile now, can't he? A happy man, this man, who put his team back on the ice in the third period, trailing 5-1. to one. And they came back, forcing the overtime. And then the goal with 5.57 gone in the second overtime session. The Wolverines win it 6-5. There's the man, Mike Moose, a junior from Burlington, Ontario, who made a sensational move about 30 feet in front of the goaltender, Chris Dixon, and then bore on in and buried it. 4-0-3 at the time of the goal in the second half of the first overtime period. Warren Sharples, the winning goaltender, did an outstanding job this evening, as did his counterpart, Chris Dixon, this game was a game of flurries. Here's another look. A terrific move coming up here by Mike Moose to get around the defenseman. That was Ward. He's in now and lifts it off of the pad of the goaltender Chris Dixon for the game winner. And Alex Roberts and he go crashing to the ice surface. Here's another look. It was a two on two situation. Moose and Valentine. Valentine was on Moose right. It was Parrott that Moose goes around with this great move right here and he's home free. It's just a matter of beating the goaltender. Dixon got a piece of it but not enough and Moose goes soaring into the air. Still another look from behind the play. Right there is the move that made the play. Turner and Ballantyne were motoring in in case there was a rebound. There was not. The goal had been scored by Mike Brost and the Wolverines of the 1988 Great Lakes Invitational Collegiate Hockey Champions. Pretty tough to deny this man the star of the game role, but there were a lot of heroes for the Wolverines here this evening, and the steady comeback that began very late in the third period when it looked like school was definitely out for the Wolverines. They came back and showed a lot of fortitude, 
Michigan rule. And as a result, pick up their 10th victory of the season. Whoa. And the first championship in the Great Lakes Invitational Tournament since 1975. It's the third title that the Wolverines have won here. 66, 75, and now 88. We'll be back in a moment, so please stay with us. You're watching Pass Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, the University of Michigan, a sensational come-from-behind winner to take the GLI Trophy home here this evening, winning by a score of 6-5 to five in overtime. Now here's Chris McClure down on the ice. Okay, Larry. Larry, uh, we're just in the midst of getting some of the presentations. The winning trophy to the University of Michigan has just been awarded, and we're going to try and talk to a couple of players. And as a matter of fact, they, they took the signal just right. First of all, let me turn to Mike Moose, who got the game-winner ninth of the year. Had a great move at the blue line, really opened the shot for you and made the play, but then you had to finish it off. And I'll tell you, from upstairs, it was fun to watch two teams really go after a win in overtime. Oh, it was, it was a fantastic game. You couldn't ask for anything better. You know, we were after the second period, we were down 5-1, and we just sat in the dressing room. We thought, you know, what are we doing out here? We can't go and tell everybody we didn't work hard, and, you know, it was, everything was right. You know, the place was packed, and uh, so we just went out there, and we said, okay, well, work hard and just see what happens. We'll give ourselves a chance, and that's what we did. After the slump, now it's three in a row. You won at UIC, you won last night, you win tonight with a great come from behind. What's it done for the team? Oh, it's a great confidence boost. I think the key, to, you know, has been our power play and our special teams. You know, that's, I think that's what, you know, we were in Boston and, and we, we failed in our penalty killing and our power play. And, and this weekend at UIC, our power play came together and our special teams, and I think that gave everybody confidence, and we just went from there. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That's Mike Moose, and let's turn over to the other side right here, a fellow we talked an awful lot about, not only in the third period, but throughout the game, because I don't know if you can hear me, but Jeff, we felt that your line really set the tone for the comeback with just flat out hard work. Yeah, we've been, uh, Ken Brothers and Timmy Helber and I've been working as a unit for the last couple of weeks, and uh, we wear the yellow jerseys in practice, so we call ourselves the Maze Line. <laughs> and uh, both those guys really work hard, and, and just through uh, tough work, you know, we seem to get things done. You don't have a lot of points. You probably don't get a lot of notice. Other guys do on the club, and, and, and I suppose you get lost in the shuffle in our eyes as well, but it seemed to be one of the best games you've ever had. Did, did you feel that way? Oh, definitely. This is the best game I've had in college. I think it's the most ice time I've had since high school. <laughs> but when, uh, when we saw ourselves down 5-1 to one going into the third period, just uh, the pride of Michigan itself, we, we, we just wanted no part of that. and We decided it's going to be 0-0 zero, zero going into the third period. And I knew if uh, we could get back to 5-5, five to five, uh, my boy Mike Moose would be able to put it in the neck. He's got a, he's got a knack for putting, the, uh, for putting the overtime gamers in. Okay, congratulations. Terrific effort. All right, thanks a lot. So that's a couple of the key players, certainly. Uh, Mike Moose with the winning goal, and we thought Jeff Urban had an awful lot to do with that effort. And I don't know if we can get Red Barron, and we'll try and get him, and we'll be back in Detroit at the Great Lakes Invitational in a moment with final comments and perhaps the coach of the Michigan Wolverines, Red Berenson. Larry? Okay, Chris, thank you very much. Red Berenson, of course, collecting the hardware and uh, is uh, now coming onto the ice. I don't know if we want to go with what we had formatted here or we want to go back down to the ice. Uh, you tell me, because Red Berenson has just joined Chris McClure down on the ice. And uh, we'll wait for a little bit of further direction here. There's the championship trophy, and here's Chris McClure. Okay, we are with Red. Larry? And I said after the second period that really the only thing Red can say is kind of what he said in our interview, which we aired about that time. Hard work and good habits will turn things around, and really that's what you had to rely on in that third period to get it changed over. Well, it was interesting, uh, Chris, because our team was not playing well, and it seemed like we couldn't get out of a certain rut, that, uh, whether it was a mental rut or a physical rut. We weren't skating with them, we weren't checking, we weren't hitting, and we didn't seem desperate, and I think... Uh, we went into the third period with the idea that we're not going to embarrass ourselves. We're going to give ourselves a chance to be respectable and at least score the first goal and try and win the period. And to come back and score four <laughs> goals was uh, maybe beyond everyone's expectations. But as the team started scoring and getting momentum, we got some emotion. And with emotion, anything can happen in college hockey. Talk about the fourth line, because we thought, at least to a, a significant degree, they predicated that tone, Jeff Urban and Helber and those fellas. Well, there was no question, uh, and I don't know why, but for some reason, Jeff Urban, who was a senior playing in his last uh, GLI, was possessed. He was. He worked with so much more enthusiasm and speed 
and effort and leadership the more than I've seen from Jeff in the last three years and I couldn't be prouder of anyone although he didn't score a goal tonight he was one of the catalysts that made this team uh, work harder and, and eventually win. Well you said you were optimistic about the second half you got a little something going here obviously what we talked about before is left behind it's and congratulations. Well thanks very much Chris this is a big thrill for us it's my first uh, GLI uh, championship and of course I never expected it uh, to be this way but it's it's been an exciting game believe me for the fans that stay this has been a great game. Yeah those that left too bad for them. Red Berenson the coach of the victorious now Michigan Wolverines the Great Lakes champion Larry. All right Chris thank you very much and congratulations Red on a terrific tournament and the GLI championship. The all tournament team and most valuable player has just been announced Mike Moose Todd Brost and uh, Neil Eisenhut represent the Blue Liners Moose and Brost of course from Michigan Miles O'Connor one of the defensemen and Russ Parent of North Dakota the other defenseman and the goaltender Warren Sharples of Michigan who went through this tournament unbeaten and the most valuable player you saw him being presented with his trophy a moment ago Todd Brose from Michigan the senior from Calgary Alberta it has been a uh, big career for him on the Michigan campus and I can just about imagine what the folks in Calgary are thinking right now they are going absolutely crazy in that little bar up there in Calgary a, a big turnout for those folks again this evening. Well that just about wraps things up from the Joe we invite you to join us for our next regular CCHA conference competition a week from Sunday as the Michigan State Spartans host the Flames of Illinois Chicago. Stay with us now as we bring you world professional racquetball. We have a big day of sports tomorrow beginning at 615 with Jackson action. The golf show airs at 7, followed by live Red Wing hockey action at 7.30. Jacques Squad plays host to the Hartford Whalers here at the Joe Louis Arena. The business report follows hockey, then we talk baseball with Ed Randall. Inside Bicycling wraps up 1988 on pass. Now for Chris McClure, this is Larry Osterman saying goodnight from the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Again, the final score of tonight's game in overtime, Michigan 6 North Dakota, five.